I'm sitting in a 7-Eleven parking lot at 11 p.m. Texting a man that isn't you, explaining to him that I can't give him something you already have, that I have nothing left to give to men, that I am tapped out. He wants exclusivity, safety, to know that I won't leave or entertain other men. Ironic, though, because I guess he wanted the same thing. I have always been a hurricane, beautiful from afar, but dangerous up close. I keep asking them to stay back, but they love the way the waves crash against the banks. Take solace in knowing that after destruction, the sun will still rise. They think I'm the sun, completely unaware that I'm actually the storm. Cognitive dissonance. Is it called heartbreak if you're the one who broke it? You still get to hold this pain. If you're the one that walked away, will it mean that I'm a quitter? That everyone was right? Will it mean that I'm a terrible person? I had never allowed myself to cry for this, for us. When you burn something to the ground, are you allowed to mourn the ashes? I am looking for exits again, crafting my escape route, and I wonder, do you find someone who makes you more of you? Do you change for them? Or do you simply quiet the voices in the back of your head? Is that what love is? Idolatry. I remember praying that I'd be a better per partner to you before praying that I'd be a better person. I remember giving all I had to us before making sure I had anything to give. I am sorry for making your words song and your kisses communion. I should have never deemed you perfection that way. And maybe I never said it aloud, never asked you to be my deity, but I sing your praises often, probably when you didn't deserve them. Kept resurrecting our love as if it was bigger than us, bigger than this world. I should have never loved you that way. They will give you a name. A label, something to help them better understand such tragedy, because you were supposed to fold, to break, to do anything but be standing here, so they dismiss you with this name, hand it to you, seeming like a consolation prize for best in the game you never asked to participate in, you will hold this label. For some, it will be heavy. For others, it will feel like a badge of honor, evidence that you didn't just make it all up, proof that someone sees them, that someone believes them. But never forget you were something before this, that they don't get to name you, that you will be something after this, that this isn't the climax of your story, not even the best chapter. It's your choice whether you hold on to this name, but living isn't the same as surviving. Living is so much more. You deserve that much. Healing. You won't realize how far you've come until one day the pain won't be there anymore. It will be foreign, no longer comforting. It will be replaced with a smile or something more genuine. You won't know whether the label is feeling happiness because that is something that has always been fleeting for you. And you won't want to let this even go so easily. You will learn to be okay with being more firework than atom bomb, more bark than bite. The softness suits you. The weight of that armor was never yours to carry. You should never have to protect yourself that way. Learning what love truly feels like will be a difficult process. It will mean unlearning the abuse that has tricked you for years, unbearing your heart and trusting. This has never come easy for you. But I promise you are up for the challenge. <laughs>